Hi everyone, welcome back to Fertility Friday. In this video, we'll be talking about egg freezing. And specifically, we'll start off talking about some general information on reproductive potential, what egg freezing is, what the process involves, what to expect when you come back and actually wanna use these eggs, and also some common questions that we see. First, let's talk about some general fertility statistics that are helpful to know. We are born with a certain number of eggs and that number declines over time. The most number of eggs we'll have is six to seven million when we're actually still in utero in our mom's belly. By the time we are born, the number has already declined to one to two million. The number then drops to about 300,000 at the onset of puberty, 25,000 when we're in our 40s, and then less than 1,000 by the time of menopause. Over the course of our reproductive lifespan, we will ovulate around 400 eggs and the rest of the eggs will die off. We cannot regenerate eggs, so once the pool of remaining eggs is depleted, we are not able to increase our remaining egg supply. This graph shows pregnancy rates in various populations at different times in history. Fertility declines with age, and the effects of age are more pronounced in the woman than in the man. For women, there is a significant decrease in pregnancy rates around the age of 35. As women get older, there is a decline in pregnancy rates and an increase in miscarriage rates. This is due to an increasing proportion of genetically abnormal eggs. Usually an egg will go through two division processes and you'll end up with a normal number of chromosomes in the eggs. As we become older, the chromosomes don't divide properly and you end up with an abnormal number of chromosomes in the egg. If the egg were to fertilize, you end up with no pregnancy, miscarriage, or genetically abnormal offspring such as Down syndrome. According to the National Vital Statistics, women have continued to delay having children over the last 50 years. There are many reasons for this, ranging from not having found the right partner, to pursuing career or educational goals, or not being ready to start a family at that time. Egg freezing is the process of cooling eggs to sub-zero temperatures to preserve reproductive potential. This technology is currently our best option that allows women the opportunity to have biological children later in life, but there are limitations. First is that it is not a guarantee at having a biological child. It is an option that gives us some control over increasing the chances of having biological children in our more advanced years, which we did not have before. Until 2012, egg freezing was considered experimental. However, data over the past decade and a half has been reassuring in terms of safety of the process and therefore it is no longer considered experimental. The process involves undergoing the process of in vitro fertilization or IVF. IVF involves taking medication to stimulate the ovaries to produce multiple mature eggs, then undergoing a minor surgical procedure called an egg retrieval to remove those eggs. Then the mature eggs will then be frozen for future use. Previously, eggs and embryos were frozen with a method called slow freeze. This allows freezing to occur at a slower rate. The advent of vitrification has revolutionized the technology of egg freezing. Vitrification is a process of using ultra-rapid cooling to solidify the cells into a glass-like state without the formation of ice crystals. Vitrification has been shown to significantly improve survival rates, pregnancy rates, and fertilization rates compared to the previously used slow freeze method. The process of egg freezing usually overall takes about two months to complete and involves four steps. At the initial consult, we'll do a history and physical exam and we'll assess your ovarian function with a blood test called an AMH and an ultrasound to look at the ovaries, in particular to look at the follicle count. This will tell us overall about ovarian reserve. In preparation for the cycle, you'll meet with a nurse to review medications and create a calendar. You'll also sign consents with your physician and go over expectations with the cycle based on the data we have, primarily age, AMH, and antral follicle count. The next step will be going through the active cycle of IVF. And then lastly, we will often meet with the patients after the cycle to review the outcome. In the active cycle, protocols may vary depending on the results of ovarian reserve, but typically we'll have patients do two to three weeks of birth control. This will help synchronize the follicles to grow together so that way we get the most mature eggs. Then patients will take injections to stimulate the ovaries to grow multiple follicles. There will be a separate injection to prevent ovulation because we don't want patients to ovulate during this process. We will monitor patients with blood work and ultrasound every two to three days, usually a total of four to five visits. We try and make these visits quick in the morning so we don't interfere with work days. Once the follicles reach the right size, we'll have the patient take another shot called a trigger shot. 
this is necessary for the last steps of egg maturation, will then schedule an egg retrieval 35 to 36 hours after the trigger shot. Here is one of the injections in action so you can get an idea of what the process is like. After removing the pen cap, use an alcohol wipe to wipe the outside of the pen. Place the needle on top of the pen. It has an outer cover and an inner cover. Remove the outer cover. Dial up your medication dose that your physician prescribed. Use the alcohol wipe to wipe the site of the injection. Remove the inner cover. Pinch the skin and inject. You'll inject by pushing the button at the end of the pen. Wait five seconds before removing the needle. Apply pressure with gauze if needed. Place the outer cover back on the needle. Remove the needle and dispose of the needle. The egg retrieval is scheduled, as I mentioned, 35 to 36 hours after the trigger. The egg retrieval is done under mild anesthesia with ultrasound guidance. There is a small needle guide above the ultrasound probe and the needle will be advanced through the needle guide. The needle will rest above the ultrasound probe until we get to the back of the vaginal wall. The needle will then go through the vaginal wall and into the ovary. There is a vacuum suction mechanism and we will essentially aspirate the fluid and the eggs out of each follicle. Each follicle has a microscopic egg in it that we cannot see. The fluid and eggs will then travel through the tubing and into the test tube. The test tube will then be handed off to the embryologist who will identify the eggs. This is what the eggs initially look like. The egg is surrounded by a cloud of cells called cumulus cells. The eggs will then be trimmed and stripped to remove the cumulus cells to assess the eggs for maturity. This is what trimming looks like. This is the final product after trimming and stripping where we can see how many mature eggs we have. Here you can see an immature egg versus a mature egg. You can see the mature egg has extruded a polar body and has essentially gone through one of the meiotic divisions. Vitrification, as I mentioned earlier, is a method of choice for freezing eggs and embryos. It involves using high cryoprotectant concentrations and ultra-rapid cooling in liquid nitrogen to solidify the cell into a glass-like state without the formation of ice crystals. This is a video of the eggs being frozen in liquid nitrogen. One of the common questions we get are what are some of the risks and side effects of going through this process? Some include local bruising from the injection, bloating or abdominal discomfort, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which is a risk when patients over respond to treatment and involves enlargement of the ovaries and fluid accumulation. Luckily, this is a very rare risk. The egg retrieval is a minor surgical procedure, so risks of bleeding and infection are possible. After the procedure, mild cramping and light bleeding are to be expected, but usually resolve within 24 hours. What is the ideal number of eggs to retrieve? The ideal number of eggs to be retrieved is really dependent on many factors. The woman's age, her ovarian reserve, the number of children she would like to have, and the likelihood of live birth that she's comfortable with achieving. While more and more women are pursuing egg freezing, there still hasn't been enough time to allow a significant proportion of these women to come back, thaw their eggs, and attempt to have children to provide better estimates of success rates at various ages, particularly in older women. Having said that, there are a few studies reporting prediction models that can provide some guidance on the chance of having a live birth based on the woman's age at the time of egg retrieval and the number of mature eggs retrieved. This retrospective study reported prediction models for women who had undergone egg freezing for various indications. To briefly summarize, freezing 15 to 20 mature eggs in women under the age of 38 gave them approximately 70 to 80% chance of having at least one live birth. These models can provide patients an idea of probability of live birth so that we can decide at the end of the cycle if our goals were met or if the patient would want to consider another IVF cycle to obtain more eggs. What happens when we're ready to use these eggs? Depending on your age and ovarian reserve, 
patients can consider trying to conceive on their own, assuming no other infertility factors are present and the cycles are regular. It's still good to consult with your physician on how long you should try to conceive based on your age and other factors. If you decide to use the eggs, the eggs will then undergo a thaw process. After that, the eggs will undergo ICSI, which stands for intracytoplasmic sperm injection. This is the process of injecting the sperm directly into the egg. This is recommended for two reasons. First, the cumulus cells had previously been removed, and this reduces fertilization rates by standard insemination methods. Second, the outer shell of the egg becomes hard after going through a freeze-thaw process, and so we're concerned about the sperm's ability to penetrate the egg on its own. So we want to assist the sperm by directly injecting it into the egg. The embryo will then grow for five to six days in the lab. There is the option to biopsy the embryo to determine if it's genetically normal. This will help us increase pregnancy rates and decrease miscarriage rates. We will then put the embryo back into the uterus at a later time, and this is called an embryo transfer. When is the best time to freeze eggs? There isn't a really clear-cut answer for this, but generally speaking, the younger the woman is, the better her chances at retrieving a larger number of better quality eggs with less IVF cycles. The disadvantage, however, is that she may not end up needing to use these eggs. Conversely, the older the woman is, the more likely she is to undergo more IVF cycles to freeze more eggs of lower quality to achieve comparable pregnancy rates. Therefore, if a woman is considering egg freezing, a good time to start thinking about it is between these two extremes. Typically, we say between the age of 30 to 37 years old. How long can they be stored? There have been only a few studies looking at the duration of time and outcomes, and of those studies, there's been shown to be no difference in outcomes if the eggs were stored for a shorter versus longer period of time. Is there an impact on future fertility or shortening the time to menopause? It does not shorten the time to menopause. Normally what happens is a certain number of follicles are recruited at the beginning of a cycle. One of those follicles will grow to be the dominant follicle and grow a mature egg, and that egg will eventually ovulate. The remaining follicles and eggs will die off. The following month, another set of eggs will become visible. We are simply trying to grow and mature all the eggs in a cycle that would have otherwise died off, and this has no effect on future cycles or future menopause. Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, give us a like, comment below. You can always follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube under the handle MD. Thanks again and see you next time.